Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve course schedule two, lead code number 210. And by the way, you should definitely solve course schedule one before this one. This is essentially the same problem, but with a minor twist. Okay, there's a total of num courses, which I'm just gonna call n. So n courses that you have to take, and they're labeled from zero to n minus one. So we're given an array of prerequisites, where each prerequisites at i is a list of two values, ai and bi. And that indicates you must take course bi first if you want to take course AI, as in B is a prerequisite for A. So for example, the pair 0, 1 indicates that to take course 0, you'd first have to take course 1. 1 is a prerequisite for 0. Now, unlike course schedule 1, we don't have to just return if we can take all the courses or not. We need to return the ordering of courses that you should take to finish all the courses. And there's likely many valid answers, and so you can actually return any of those. And it still might be impossible possible to finish all the courses. So if there's ever a reason why you can't take a course, well, then you'd have to return an empty array. Okay, so the first example here, num courses is two, and prerequisites is just one zero. So all it's specifying here is that in order to take a course one, you'd first have to take a course zero. Now, the ordering is pretty simple here. So we'd want to return the list of just zero one. So we're returning a list of ordered courses saying that, well, if zero is a prerequisite for one, okay, well, we'd take zero zero first, and then we take one after that. There's just two and you can take both of them. So we'd return that list. Okay, and the next example here is probably better visualized than just talked about here. Okay, so we're gonna visualize that second example there. So if there's four many courses to take and these are our prerequisites, then this is how this would look. Now you'd want to draw this as a graph where we're saying in order to take course one, you'd first have to take course zero. So we wanna draw it in the way where to take the course, you'd first first have to take the other one. Then the next one here says before we can take course two, we'd first have to take course zero. So that means they're both pointing to zero here. And the next one is three one. So in order to take course three, you would first have to take course one and three two. So in order to take three, you'd also have to take two. Okay, so let's see if we can take all these courses here. Well, we'd kind of look at all the courses individually here. So can you take course zero? Well, yeah, it actually has no prerequisites. So you can definitely take course zero. Can we take course one? We can only take course one if we can take this course. And yes, you can take that. That's course zero. We already know we can take that. So we can take course one as well. Can we take course two? Well, we can take course two if we can take this. Yes, we know we can take course zero. That is good to go. And can we take course three? Well, we need to know, can we take this? Yes, we can. And can we take this? Yes, we also can. We can take all the courses. We have four check marks and n equals four courses. So we know we can take all the courses, but it's not just saying true whether we can take all the courses or not. We actually need to get an ordering here. So what we do here, and I'll formalize it a little bit more in a second, we take our ordering, which I'm just gonna call O, and it's an empty list so far. And we want this to be ordered so that you can take all these courses in order like this. Okay. So can we take course zero? Yes, we can. Okay, that's fine. We'll put that on the list. So that's the first thing that we'll take. Can we take course one? Well, we can take course one if you can take course zero. Yes, you can. So we'll take course one. Can we take course two? We already know that we can. And can we take course three? Yes, we can here. Okay, this worked out very, very well in order. Now, the reason this worked out so well is just because this is a very hand-picked example. And so we need to do one a little more complicated. Okay, this is going to be a better example with six courses and here's our connections. Okay, so the first edge here, two to zero, that means that course two is going to first require course zero. Course one is going to require course zero as well. So one also requires zero. Course zero requires course three. So this requires three and three requires four. So three requires course four and three also requires five. So three requires requires five. Now we have a nice example here. Okay, and I'm hoping you've seen course schedule one, but if you haven't, that's still gonna be okay. Essentially, we're going to do a DFS at every node. So starting first at node zero, we do a DFS, we do that, and then we'd also do one from node one and then two and so on. But we're not gonna traverse the whole graph every single time we see a node because every node is going to be in one of three states and they're all going to start at state zero, where zero is implying unvisited. 
it. Okay, so we have not seen these at all yet. State one is going to be visiting. So they're kind of in our current path or our current trajectory. And state two is going to be visited, basically meaning that we can take that course, we don't need to search it anymore or any down that path of it, because we already know we could take that course. Okay, so they're all zeros to begin with. So we'd kind of iterate over our range of courses here, because we'd want to know, hey, can we take course zero? And when can we take course zero? Uh, can we take course one? And when can we take that? So we'd kind of iterate over these courses here, we'd see the first course, and we'd put this in the state of visiting. So we're currently kind of in this path here. In order to take course zero, we'd first have to take course three, we are at three, we are going to mark that as visiting that in order to take three, we'd have to take both of these courses. And it doesn't really matter which one you pick here. So let's just say we picked this one, for example, okay, we're visiting the five, and we can take this course, okay, so we can finally start building up our order here, which I'll write over here, we would have initialized that to be empty at the beginning, and we can take course five. So let's write that down, we can take that first, because it has no prerequisites, it has no out degree or an out degree of zero. So we can take that. And when we say that we can take a course, we'd mark it as visited. Okay, this is the visited state, meaning that we know we can take this course. Okay, so then we kind of backtrack here to take three, we'd still need to take this course. So we're visiting four, so visiting, and then we can take that course. So that's going to change to visited, aka two, we can take four. Now take a look over here, we know that we can actually choose either of these, the order of this really doesn't matter. Hence, it didn't matter whether we went here or here first, because both of them don't have any prerequisites, they're basically independent of each other. So now we're basically able to take three. So we'd mark that as visited, and we would add it to our list. Okay, we got here because we started at zero. So zero, we did that outbound connection, it has no other ones. And so he would be marked as visited, we can now say we can take course zero. So we'd iterate over this range, we'd started at zero. Now we're going to do the DFS at one to see if and when we can take one. So over here, we'll take a look at that, we'll mark that as visiting. And this path doesn't take long at all. Because okay, if you want to take course one, you'd have to do this stuff, but we hit a course where we visited that. And you don't want to do this search again here, because we've basically taken zero already. So if you only needed course zero to take a course one, well, then you can take one now. So we'd mark this as visited, we've taken that course. And now we can take course one as well. Okay, we would then iterate over this two. that's next in line, and we'd say, Okay, we're visiting that we would say, Okay, to take course two, you'd have to go over here. And we've already taken this. So for the same reason as before, mark that as visited and put that into our list of stuff here. Okay, so that's essentially what you do. And the only other catch here would be if we had a cycle in the graph. So if you had something like this, which would be a connection between five and zero, so that'd be that five requires course zero. So basically, what what would have happened here is that we would have found a cycle here where we're visiting this, we go over here, we're visiting this, we visit this, and then we go to a node where we're also visiting it, aka implying there's a cycle in this check course schedule number one for a better explanation of that. Uh, but essentially, we could mark that this has a cycle. And if there is a cycle, then you don't really care about your ordering anymore. We always just return an empty list saying that you can't take the courses. Okay, so let's code this up. Okay, so we'll get our order, which is just going to be an empty list for now. And we'll build up our graph, because basically, we're given a list of edges, these are directed edges in the graph. And so we need to get a graph, which I'll just call G, and it's easiest to use a default dict, which takes a list. So the default value for a dictionary key will be an empty list. And then we say for each A and B in the prerequisites, we just need to establish this connection. So it'd be G at A dot append with B. Okay, so we're saying that if A is the first piece, and B is the second piece of that edge, well, we want to say that A has a new connection of B. Now let's just get some constants. So unvisited and visiting and visited are equal to 0 1 and 2. So unvisited is 0 visiting is 1 visited is 2. And we'll get an array called states, which is equal to unvisited times the number of courses, because we need num courses or n many slots, basically just marking that all of the courses are unvisited or untaken so far. Now, what we're going to do is a DFS. So we'll define DFS, which is takes a node, and I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. Uh, but for I in the range of num courses, because you need to try and take all the courses, 
we're going to make our DFS return. I'll just write it down here. True if no cycle, aka everything's okay, and false if there is a cycle, basically from that path we started at. So we can use this where if not DFS at I, so if there is not a DFS at I, aka if there is a cycle, because it's false if cycle, if that's happening, then you want to return the empty list specifying that since there was a cycle, then you can't take all of the courses. And this DFS is also going to build up our order array. So at the end here, you could just kind of return your order. We need this function to return true if there's no cycle, and it's also got to build up our ordering. Okay, so if the states at i is currently visiting, okay, so if this is in our current path already, that is what defines a cycle. It means we're stuck in this loop here. We're seeing something we're already seeing right now. So in that case, you just want to return false. Now, otherwise, if the states at i is equal to visited, so if we've seen this already, aka we've already added it to our order array, we can take and have taken this course, then you just want to return true, saying that, yeah, there's no cycles and we've already done what we want to do. Let's just leave. Okay, otherwise, if it's not either of these two, it must be unvisited. So we're here, we're visiting it now. States at i is now equal to visiting. Okay, we're looking at it right now it's in our current path then we want to say for each of the neighbors because you can't take this course until you visit its outbound neighbors so for each neighbor in g at i so for each of its connections well if there's not a dfs at the neighbor so if you have trouble over there well then you want to return false because if you had trouble over here then it should be trouble overall so return false if you go through all of its neighbors and you don't have any issues well then we're out of this and we're actually able to take this current course we're currently looking at i we're able to take this course and so what we want to do is states at i is equal to visited marking that yes you can take this course and we can take it now so order dot append i we're able to take course i and so let's say that we've taken it and actually add it to our ordering and also we know that there's no cycles over here because we've gotten past all of the points where there could be a cycle there wasn't a problem with us and there wasn't a problem with the further path and so there's no cycles so we'd also want to return true saying there's no cycle Okay, this is our final code here. So we build up the graph, we are going to do a DFS that detects cycles, and it's going to add to our ordering. And we're going to go over all the courses to make sure that you can actually take all of them. So the time complexity of this solution, well, we're essentially going to do a DFS from every node in the graph, but when you've already seen a node before, it's very quick. So basically, if you've visited a node before, aka you've done a DFS somewhere through it at some point, then it's just an O of one operation for that node. So when you iterate over all of the courses here, we'll see all of the end courses, uh, and then at some point through the DFS, you'll see all of them a second time. Uh, but that's really just O of two N, and so so it's essentially an O of N solution. Uh, however, you do also see the edges in the graph for each neighbor in the graph. So for each of the nodes, you also see all of the neighbors. And so this is actually O of N plus E. And generally you'd write it as O of V plus E. We see all of the vertices in the graph and you also see all of the edges because of this for neighbor in graph right there. Okay, and the space complexity of this solution is actually going to be exactly the same here, uh, because you can see, and actually forgot to say this in the first course schedule video I made, course schedule one, uh, we quite clearly are storing the number of vertices because we're saying we have N courses or V courses, and so you're storing all of those in an array. Doing the DFS with recursion, which is what we're doing, is also going to store uh, O of V space on the recursive call stack. And we're also storing E things because you can see we're given prerequisites. We're basically saying for each of these A, Bs, well, we're gonna store with this A, we're gonna store that B. So that's essentially storing all of the edges in the graph as well. Okay, I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.